I'm going to be doing a bit of heat treatment and gear cutting in this video. The backstory is, I recently had a friend of mine ask if I could make a replacement gear for his lathe. He has a lathe that's a bit bigger than mine, and I'm not exactly sure which gear I'm replacing, but based on the description, I'm guessing it's an idler gear. And since I have the correct gear cutting attachments and a dividing head, I was pretty happy to do it. Realistically, I could have made it from aluminium or steel, or even bronze, and that would have been perfectly acceptable. But I was already case hardening a few other things at the same time, so there was no harm in doing it to the gear at the same time. And frankly, gears are a really good candidate to be case hardened. If you think about it, there's going to be a lot of wear on the face of each tooth as they come into contact and mesh with each other, so those are going to be the places where you're going to see the most wear. So if we're able to harden the faces of each tooth, we can extend the working life of the gear whilst not worrying too much about hardening the inside. As you've probably seen, I've done a bit of case hardening recently on the channel, so to make it a bit more interesting, I've gotten my hands on a piece of EN36A steel. If you've never heard of this stuff before, I can't really blame you. In fact, I'd never really taken much of a notice of this alloy before I started to case harden parts. According to the handbook and the manufacturer, this alloy is made specifically for case hardening projects. That's not to say that the other projects where I've used low carbon steel are necessarily wrong, but this steel has been alloyed in a certain way to make it a bit better suited for case hardening. That being that it's a bit stronger and has much better hardenability than a regular carbon steel. The only real downside to me using this stuff is not a lot of places keep it stocked. In fact, it was pretty difficult to get just a small chunk in this size. And it's also very expensive for what it is. It's roughly 50% more expensive than 4140. And it's almost five times the cost of hot rolled steel. So before we make the gear, let's quickly take a look at why manufacturers are willing to pay so much for this steel, and is it worth it? The first characteristic is pretty straightforward. It has a high tensile strength, which is usually a good thing to have. It's not the strongest alloy, but it's almost twice as strong as a low carbon steel, and that's despite the fact that this alloy has almost no carbon in it. And in a practical sense, it means that when you case harden a part, let's take a gear tooth as an example, the material that is making up the bulk of the gear tooth, and that's taking most of the load, it's going to be made from a higher tensile steel. If we used a low carbon steel and case hardened it, we might be able to get a similar hardness on the outside, but the material on the inside is going to be a lot less strong than if we'd used EN36A. The effect of using EN36A is you effectively get a much stronger gear that can take much higher loads. The other advantage that this alloy has over a regular carbon steel is that it has much higher hardenability. And the most important thing to stress is that hardness and hardenability aren't the same thing. These are the V-blocks and the vise that I made from case hardened carbon steel. And whilst I can quench it and get around about 65 Rockwell C hardness, this steel has pretty low hardenability. As another example, this is 4140 chromoly. You might only be able to quench it to 58 Rockwell C hardness, but it has much higher hardenability. Now hardenability is generally defined as how deep you can harden a piece of steel when you quench it. But you can also look at it as how fast or how slowly can you cool a piece of steel in order to harden it by the formation of martensite. Martensite forms in steel because you rapidly cool it from a red hotness. And with poor hardenability metals, such as carbon steel, you may only have a second or two to cool it down in order to form martensite. With this method, getting a hardness of 65 Rockwell C is pretty easy. The problem that you're going to experience is when you cool stuff at such a fast rate, if you don't cool it evenly, there is a big risk that you're going to warp the part and throw it out of tolerance. I learned this the hard way when I made the toolmaker's vise. 
when I dunked it in the water, I didn't move it around, and that created a vapor jacket, which cooled the part unevenly, and as a result, it warped it and threw it out of spec. Thankfully, I was able to re-grind it using the milling machine and a cup grinding wheel. It wasn't too difficult to grind because the part was made of many flat faces. But for more complex parts that might be a little bit more difficult to grind, using a more hardenable alloy would work best, simply because you can cool it down at a slower rate while still getting a high hardness but avoiding any warping. As an example, what I have here are two pieces of annealed steel. One is 1045 carbon, which isn't very hardenable, and the other piece is high hardenability A2 steel. I'll heat both pieces up to red hotness, and then I'll let both air cool for about an hour. To no one's surprise, the 1045 steel is very soft. The cooling rate was too slow and no martensite was able to form. The A2 steel however is a very different story. Even though I cooled it in air, it's still able to reach a hardness of around about 50 Rockwell C. So what this hopefully shows is that higher hardenability steels can be cooled at a slower rate and still get pretty high hardnesses. Now EN36A is not an air hardening steel, but I should be able to quench it in oil and still achieve similar hardnesses to a carbon steel. Oil cools at a rate that's about one third that of water, so it should help reduce the potential for warping. Now there is more to the subject of hardenability, but in the context of case hardening, this should be enough. So I think we should get started on making the gear. And that is our gear ready for case hardening. Like in previous videos, the source of carbon is going to come in the form of crushed up charcoal. I'll also be adding about 5% by weight of sodium carbonate. The carbonate breaks down at a relatively low temperature to produce carbon monoxide and it seems to act as a catalyst at the start. Plus it's a lot safer than using barium carbonate which a lot of other methods call for. I'll then seal the packing box shut with kiln cement. I'll also be hardening a piece of rod, just so I can check to see how deep the case layer is. Now based on my previous tests, and looking up roughly how deep you'd want a case for this size gear, I'll let the gear harden for about an hour. This should be enough time for the packing box to heat up all the way through, and it should allow the carbon to diffuse into the surface of the gear. 
The gear seems to be in pretty good condition and it looks like all the sodium carbonate has been used up. After snapping the rod in half, we can now see the thin ring of high carbon steel surrounding the softer core. And it roughly measures to be slightly less than 0.1 millimeters, and that should roughly correspond to the case thickness on the gear. We now need to harden the gear by quenching it, and this alloy specifically requires it to be quenched in oil. I'll first coat the part in a brazing flux to keep the scale from forming at high temperature. I'll heat the part up until it stops being magnetic. The flux can make it a bit difficult to see the colour of the metal properly, so doing it this way makes it a bit easier to gauge the temperature. The oil and flux make a pretty hard substance when quenched, as the oil polymerises onto the flux and steel. To remove it, I'll be using a method which I've recently picked up, and that's to soak the part in caustic soda, also known as sodium hydroxide. The whole process is very similar to the fact that you can easily clean cast iron skillets with lye. The lye breaks down the seasoning, which is not too different to the polymerised oil on the gear. And after 30 minutes, most of the flux has been dissolved, and any that remains is very soft. And that is our gear done. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I can't feel any warping in the part, and it meshes together really nicely with another gear. Overall, I'm very happy. And before I forget, let me quickly test the hardness. When quenching regular carbon steel in this oil, I'd expect to get around about 50 Rockwell C hardness. However, this gear seems to be closer to 60 Rockwell C hardness, so the claims about better hardenability definitely seem to be true. Now it must be said, this is 100% overkill for this gear and its intended application, but I hope my friend appreciates it, and hopefully it outlasts everything else in this lathe. The final thing left for me to do is pop the gear in the oven for about 2 hours at 140 degrees celsius. This shouldn't change the hardness, but it should help relieve some of the internal stresses. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this heat treatment video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.